bahasa Indonesia. Let's sing the song number 24. Give your heart to the God.
Good evening, everyone. I have a, one announcement for you guys, especially for the youth. On behalf of the youth program, I would love to remind to all of you for the youth, we have the Meno Fun Fest program tonight uh, at 9 o'clock. So all of you for the youth, um, so you can go to the back. And if you can see me, that please um, come for me. Um, in Bahasa, bagi anak-anak pemuda remaja, uh, nanti jam 9 kita ada Meno Fun Fest di, di Emerick. Jadi nanti langsung ke belakang aja dan temu dengan saya. Oke, okay, thank you. I invite you to turn to number 24. Lagu uh, 26. Nomor, lagu nomor 26. Pujian nomor 26. 26. Let's first sing the first two verses in German. And then we will sing verse 3 and 4 in English. Kita akan menyanyikan uh, pujian uh, dalam bahasa Jerman untuk bait pertama dan kedua dan kemudian kita lanjutkan dengan bahasa Inggris di uh, bait yang ketiga dan keempat.
Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, let's continue our song number 27. Number 27, How Great the Art is a famous song. Bagi Bapak, Ibu, Saudara yang dari Indonesia ingin menyanyikan dalam bahasa Indonesia, dipersilahkan. Kita akan menyanyikan pujian nomor 27. 27. 27, How Great the Art.
a, a Spanish song to Aristotle Poderoso and Nohemi will lead us this song. Let's enjoy the song to Aristotle Poderoso, number 33, number 33, number 33. Thank you. It's great that you're all standing. Those of you who are following online, please, if you have the chance, stand up and sing with us. It's going to be fun. <laughs> A Korean song, Chuke So Wang Vie, number 10. Chuke So Wang Vie, number 10. We will sing in uh, Korean, in Korean uh, first, and then we will sing in, uh, in English. A song number 10, Chuke So Wang Vie.
cuki sowang biye cuki sowang biye ur sinjang musobosum mencakunu kunyang uriye maung buncum cundang cuki sowang nisira cuki sowang cuki sowang biye ur sinjang Alleluia. Kita berkumpul sebagai banyak individu, kita tetapi kita satu tubuh. We gather as many individuals, but we are one body. Kita berkumpul dari banyak tempat, tetapi kita datang ke satu tempat. We come from many places, but we come to one place. Kita berkumpul sebagai anak-anak Allah dari banyak latar belakang yang berbeda. Tetapi kita satu di dalam Allah. We gather as children of God from many different backgrounds, but we are one in God. Kita satu tubuh di tempat ini untuk merayakan dan belajar bersama sebagai saudara-saudari di dalam persekutuan Bapa, Putra, dan Roh Kudus. We are one body in this place to celebrate. And learn together as brother and sister in the communion of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Damai sejahtera untuk kita semua. Amin. Peace be with you. Amin. Please sit back. Silakan duduk kembali. Bapak Ibu sekalian mari kita berdoa. 
Kembali kami datang ke hadiratmu ya Tuhan, mengucapkan syukur atas berkat yang Tuhan nyatakan di dalam kehidupan kami. Dan pada kesempatan kali ini ya Tuhan, kami akan menyerahkan acara kami pada malam hari ini hanya ke dalam tanganmu. Nah, acara ini dapat berjalan dengan baik, lancar, dan seturuh dengan kehendakmu. Dan bila acara ini bisa menjadi kemuliaan bagi namamu ya Tuhan. Kami kembali menyerahkan Tuhan acara ini hanya ke dalam tangan nama Tuhan Yesus Kristus. Haleluya. Amin. Saya bertumbuh di Indonesia yang masyarakatnya plural dengan berbagai agama, kepercayaan, dan budaya. Tentu sebagai manusia, saya sangat menghargai itu karena saya mempercayai bahwa cintanya Tuhan selalu menembus sekat pemisah yang diciptakan manusia. Dan jika Tuhan mencintai kita, maka itulah cinta yang tanpa tapi. Jadi mari kita selalu menyebarkan kedamaian dan cinta kepada sesama kita. In Indonesia, I grew up in a plural society with any kind of religions, beliefs, and cultures. Of course, as a human being, I really appreciate it because I believe that God's love always breaks the barrier that a human made. And as far as I know, that if God loves us, then it's the love without but. So, let's always spread peace and love towards each other. Thank you.
to all the presence here and also in the main campus. Selamat malam pada semua yang hadir di sini dan di kampus pusat. I happened to visit Ukraine in November 2018. Saya uh, ke Ukraina di tahun 2018. And when I landed at the airport, there was a person waiting for me. Ketika saya di airport ada orang yang menunggu saya. That introduced himself as Pastor Alexei. Dia memperkenalkan diri, dia adalah Pastor Alexei. Dia memperkenalkan diri, dia adalah And uh, he said, I'm going to drive you to the city uh, to spend some time with us. Saya akan mengajakmu ke kota menikmati bersama. We, we were going to have a European meeting in uh, Ukraine, in Zaporozhye. Kita pergi ke Ukraina, uh, meeting di Ukra Ukraina. Zaporozhye. Zaporozhye. That's it, that's it. You're right, you're right. So, when I looked to the distance between the airport and the city was 100 kilometers. Jarak dari kota dan di airport 100 kilometers. So I said, well, we're probably going to spend maybe one and a half hours driving to the city. Mungkin satu setengah jam kita butuhkan untuk ke kota. But as soon as he got to the car, he started to speed up the car so fast. Tapi dia menyetir mobilnya sangat kencang. But I was not scared. I said, like, he's going quite fast. Sangat kencang. <laughs> so, after arriving at the city, I found out that it took only 45 minutes to get there. Ternyata, sampai di sana hanya 45 menit saja. So, when we arrived, I said, Pastor Alexei, why did you go so fast? Sampai di sana, saya tanya, Pastor Alexei, kenapa kamu menyetir begitu cepat? There was a reason for that. Ada alasannya. He said, I, in the town I live, Bergiansk, I have to go to the front line where the war is right now. So when I have to go from one front line up and down, I have to go very fast so the soldiers don't shoot me. Saya harus pergi sangat cepat supaya tidak ada tentara yang menembak saya. So that was the reason why he's going so fast. Itu alasannya kenapa dia menyetir dengan begitu cepat. So now we're going to take some time to see a video that Pastor Alexei did. Oke, okay, sekarang kita akan menyimak video uh, ketika Pastor Alexei melakukan itu. Sister Christ, my name is Alexei Jutsenka. I'm from Ukraine, Berdyansk. I'm glad to see you here in this conference. Our life changes 24 February. They 
are using the space also to receive refugees. Mereka juga menggunakan tempatnya gereja-gereja tersebut untuk uh, pengungsi. They are also providing food and resting in their places. Mereka juga memberikan makanan dan tempat untuk tinggal. But they also are preaching the gospel and also are reaching the population. Mereka juga memberitakan Injil. As you know, some churches, conferences in Europe started to mobilize themselves to support Ukraine. Uh, Gereja-gereja di, sorry? Uh, churches in Europe started to Gereja support. Gereja-gereja di Eropa mulai mensupport Ukraina. And that has been so interesting to see that our global family in Europe jumped in to help Ukraine. Sangat menarik bahwa saudara-saudara di Eropa uh, membantu saudara-saudara di Ukraina. First of all, we tried to understand what was the major needs of the church in Ukraine. Saat ini kami ingin tahu apa uh, yang mendasar yang mereka butuhkan gereja-gereja di Ukraina yang dibutuhkan oleh gereja-gereja di Ukraina. Then we saw the initiative of churches in Europe to provide anything they could. Dan uh, kita berinisiatif seluruh gereja-gereja di Eropa apapun yang bisa kami lakukan. Some conferences send funds for Ukraine. Uh, beberapa dari konferensi mengirimkan uang untuk mereka, dana untuk mereka. Some churches use relief agencies to send uh, food and uh, uh, items for, for eat. Dan mereka mengirimkan agensi untuk mem- mengirimkan makanan atau barang-barang yang mereka perlukan. But we saw solidarity by the majority of the churches in Europe. Kita menyaksikan begitu banyak solidaritas dari seluruh gereja di Eropa. So when you look to Pastor Alexei and ketika, you saw him, oh, sorry. ketika Anda melihat Pastor Alexei, and you saw him right now, think about him, think about the church in Ukraine. Ingatlah tentang Pastor Alexei dan ingatlah tentang gereja-gereja di Ukraina. And pray that the peace comes to that country. Dan berdoalah supaya kedamaian datang pada negara mereka. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. In our songbook, number 25, we will sing uh, this song. In the Lord, I'll be ever thankful. We will sing I'll this song only in from English. Matthew chapter 7. Let's sing this song together.
Number 28, Here I Am to Worship. Nohemi will lead us for this song.
Seven, verses 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Good evening. Selamat malam. My name is Anne Magdalena Hansen. Nama saya Anne Magdalena Johnson. I'm a pastor in Germany. Saya seorang pendeta di Jerman. And I'm here in place of Salome Heidemann from France. Saya di sini menggantikan Salome Heidemann dari Prancis. She was recently prevented from coming here. Dia tidak boleh datang ke sini. So I will read her sermon to you. Saya akan membacakan khotbahnya uh, untuk anda sekalian. When he was 17, my grandfather was forced to fight in World War II. Ketika uh, kakek saya berusia 17 tahun, dia dipaksa untuk ikut perang di Perang Dunia Kedua. When I started talking about my plans to study peace and peace theology, ketika saya mulai bicara pada kakek saya kalau saya ingin kuliah tentang teologi perdamaian, he got a little upset. Dia agak marah pada saya. He said, "You talk about peace and war, but you don't know what you're talking about." Dia berkata, "Kamu berbicara tentang perdamaian, tapi kamu tidak tahu apa yang kamu katakan." When war comes, you don't have any choice. Ketika perang datang, kamu tidak punya pilihan. There is nothing you can do. Tidak ada yang bisa kamu lakukan. At the time, I believed that what Western Europe was missing during World War II was good peace theology. Saat itu saya percaya bahwa Eropa Barat tidak memiliki teologi kedamaian yang Bagus saja. Which we have now, so we'll be fine, or so I thought. Dan sekarang kita punya, jadi kami akan baik-baik saja. A few months ago, and about 80 years after World War II, war broke out in Ukraine. Beberapa bulan yang lalu, sekitar 80 tahun setelah Perang Dunia Kedua, perang ada di Ukraina. And while our brothers and sisters in Ukraine face the evils of war, ketika saudara-saudara kita menghadapi perang di Ukraina, many Mennonites in Western Europe are shocked by the nearness and the reality of war. Beberapa orang Mennonite di Eropa Barat shock, terkejut uh, adanya reali, reality, per, adanya perang ini. Our many years of good peace theology are forgotten. Bertahun-tahun teologi kedamaian kita telah terlupakan. We feel again like my grandfather felt. Kita merasakan apa yang dirasakan kakek saya waktu itu. There is nothing we can do. Tidak ada yang bisa kami lakukan. 
suddenly, for many peace-believing Christians, the only possible option is violent engagement. Tiba-tiba kita yang percaya pada kedamaian harus berperang. We affirmed non-violence when our context was peaceful. Kita yakin uh, pada anti kekerasan ketika kita ada dalam kedamaian. But in the face of war, tapi ketika kita menghadapi perang, we see non-violent resistance as naive and unrealistic. Anti kekerasan itu menjadi naif dan tidak realistis. We have many good peace theologians. Kita memiliki teologi kedamaian yang But banyak. now what they were saying has become irrelevant. Tetapi apa yang mereka katakan sekarang menjadi tidak relevan. Today we are afraid that war may overtake Europe. Saat ini kami takut kalau perang akan menguasai Eropa. Suddenly our theology and our beliefs feel obsolete. Tiba-tiba teologi tentang perdamaian itu menjadi usang. A storm took over Europe and our convictions collapsed. Badai menerjang Eropa dan kepercayaan kita menjadi kolaps. Storms tend to do that. Biasanya badai melakukan itu. They break the things that we thought were solid and strong. Dia menghancurkan apa yang kita percaya. The scripture we read today is the closing argument of the Sermon on the Mount. Kitab yang kita baca hari ini adalah penutup dari khotbah di bukit. The sermon is a collection of teachings of Jesus. Khotbah ini adalah rangkuman dari uh, ajaran Yesus addressed to people living in difficult times. Pada orang-orang yang hidup dalam situasi yang susah. At that time Palestine was under Roman occupation. Saat itu Palestina dijajah Roma. And the Jews struggled under the oppression of a violent regime. Dan orang Yahudi di dalam uh, opresi rezim yang kejam. Heavy taxation, forced labor, and sexual abuse were part of their daily life. Pajak yang tinggi, dipaksa bekerja, Pelecehan seksual adalah uh, apa yang mereka alami hari hari demi hari. Yet Jesus calls them, the people oppressed by imperial Rome, to collectively love their enemies. Dan Yesus mengajarkan kepada mereka orang yang tertindas untuk mengasihi musuhnya. And to not resist the evil doer. Dan tidak membalas kejahatan. And he warns them that this will be a really hard. Dan mengingatkan pada mereka bahwa ini adalah sangat sulit. And that they may pay it with their lives. Dan mereka mungkin harus membayarnya dengan hidup mereka. Somehow the crowds seem to like what they hear. Tetapi orang-orang sepertinya suka dengan ajaran itu. Wow, Jesus sure has a lot of charisma. See how he teaches the authority. Wow, Yesus punya karisma. Bagaimana dia mengajar? Dia punya kuasa. Jesus probably knows that many of his listeners are just curious. Mungkin Tuhan tahu orang-orang yang mendengarnya itu hanya ingin tahu saja. They are here to see what the fuss is about. Mereka di sana hanya ingin tahu ada apa ini. To listen, discuss, comment. Untuk mendengarkan, berdiskusi dan berkomentar. And they won't act on his teachings or practice them. Dan mereka tidak akan melakukan apa yang diajarkan. But a storm is coming. Tetapi badai akan datang. A storm that will put all their ideas and beliefs to the test. Badai yang akan uh, mengguncang dan uh, melihat apakah mereka masih tetap percaya. For the people sitting on the mount and listening to Jesus. Bagi orang-orang yang saat itu mendengar ajaran Yesus. The war with Rome is about to get a lot worse. Perang dengan Roma akan menjadi lebih buruk. For Matthew's readers, persecution will afflict those who decide to follow the way of Christ. Bagi pembaca Matius sekarang, penganiayaan akan kita alami untuk orang-orang yang mengikut Kristus. And these storms will break some of the opinions and beliefs that felt so very solid. Dan badai itu akan menerjang dan menghancurkan kita, kekuatan kita yang kita anggap tadinya sangat solid. However, 
There is a way for beliefs to survive the storm. Tapi bagaimanapun juga ada jalan supaya kita bisa menghadapi badai itu. Jesus talks about two houses. Tuhan berbicara tentang dua rumah. One built on rock. Satu didirikan di atas batu. The other on sand. Yang satunya lagi didirikan di atas pasir. The storm came for both. Badai akan datang pada keduanya. The rain fell and the floods came. Hujan datang, banjir menerjang, and the winds blew, dan angin menerjang, and beat against that house. Dan akan menghancurkan rumah itu. But one house fell and the other one did not. Satu rumah akan hancur, tetapi rumah yang lainnya tidak. The difference between the two houses is their foundation. Perbedaan pada rumah itu adalah pondasinya. The foundation of the house that fell, pondasi dari rumah yang rubuh, is not believing or not in Jesus. Tidak percaya pada Yesus, tidak di dalam Kristus. Jesus tells us that the rock foundation. Yesus, Yesus berkata bahwa pondasi batu are the practice of His word. Adalah melakukan perintahnya. In the story he tells, dalam cerita yang dia katakan, both men have heard the words of Jesus. Dua orang itu sama-sama mendengarkan ajaran Tuhan. But only the wise man acted on them. Tapi hanya orang bijaksana yang melakukannya. Other translations have put them into practice. Yang maksudnya mengerjakannya dalam kehidupannya. It's acting on the words of Jesus. Melakukan perintah Tuhan. Again and again, lagi dan lagi, day in and day out, setiap hari, that prepares us for the storm, akan menyiapkan kita untuk menghadapi badai, because the storm will come anyway, karena badai akan datang. There is only one way for us to stand firm in the storm, hanya satu jalan supaya kita bisa kuat menghadapi badai tersebut. Practice, berlatih, melakukan. Practice the love of enemies. Melakukan mencintai musuh kita. Practice non-violent resistance. Tidak melakukan kekerasan. Practice disarming the oppressor without harming the oppressor. Tidak membalas kejahatan dengan kejahatan. This is something we can all practice together. Ini adalah hal yang bisa kita latih bersama-sama. If we practice together, we learn together. Kalau kita berlatih bersama, kita belajar bersama. Before I was a pastor, sebelum saya menjadi pastor, I was an occupational therapist. Saya adalah seorang terapis. The core idea in occupational therapy is akar dari terapis adalah that the brain and the body learn by doing. Otak dan tubuh belajar dengan melakukan. When we do something new, ketika kita melakukan sesuatu yang baru, neurons in our body connect in new ways. Saraf di dalam tubuh kita akan uh, terhubung dengan cara yang baru. When we repeat and practice, ketika kita mengulanginya dan berlatih, the connections grow stronger. Hubungan saraf itu akan lebih kuat. After a while, we can do that new thing in different situations without having to think about it anymore. Lama-lama kita bisa melakukannya begitu saja tanpa harus berpikir. When we practice, we learn. Ketika kita berlatih, kita belajar. That also means that if we want to learn, we need to practice. Dengan kata lain, kalau kita pengen belajar, kita harus berlatih. In theory, dalam teori, I believe I could run a marathon. Saya yakin saya bisa berlari maraton. But I'll only be able to do it if I practice running. Tapi saya hanya bisa melakukannya kalau saya berlatih berlari. The same goes for a radical peace witness or non-violent resistance. Sama juga dengan perdamaian atau tidak melakukan kekerasan, anti kekerasan. In Western Europe, di Eropa Barat, when we Mennonites talk about peace, ketika Mennonite berbicara tentang perdamaian, we spend a lot of time talking about how we should act in different situations. Kami berdiskusi banyak tentang bagaimana kami harus uh, berlaku dalam situasi-situasi yang berbeda. And most of the time that's all we do. Dan hanya itu yang kami lakukan. 
when the war actually comes, ketika perang benar-benar datang, that's when we should start doing what we've been discussing. Itu harusnya saat kita melakukannya, melakukan apa yang biasanya kita diskusikan. But the middle of the storm, tapi di tengah badai, is not the right time to learn how to act. Bukan saatnya untuk kita belajar melakukannya. Don't wait for the storm to figure out if your foundation is solid. Jangan menunggu badai datang untuk mengetahui bahwa fondasi Anda itu sudah benar-benar solid. Make sure it is. Yakinkan itu benar-benar solid. How? Bagaimana? With practice. Dengan latihan. Mennonites are used to hearing calls to non-violent Christians at assembly. Dalam sidang raya seperti ini biasanya Mennonite mengajak kita untuk uh, melakukan tindakan perdamaian anti kekerasan. At the 1967 MWC assembly in Amsterdam, pada tahun 1967 di Amsterdam dalam temu raya, Vincent Harding called on Mennonites. Vincent Harding mengajak Mennonites to come alongside our black sisters and brothers in the freedom struggle. Untuk bersama-sama dengan saudara-saudara kita berkulit hitam to come alongside the many re re Revolutionary movements around the world. Untuk kebebasan mereka bersama-sama dengan uh, gerakan revolusi seluruh dunia. At the 1984 assembly in Strasbourg. Di tahun 1984 temu raya di Strasbourg. Ron Sider urged the church to develop a highly trained peacemaking task force. Ron Sider mengajak kita untuk membangun pelatihan tentang perdamaian which sparked the creation of community peacemaker teams yang akhirnya membuat ada suatu kom, komuni, tim komunitas perdamaian but most of us have stayed on the sidelines tapi sebagian besar dari kita hanya diam di tepi saja where things are comfortable di tempat yang nyaman in a nice little house on the beach di rumah kecil yang nyaman di tepi pantai what does it look like to practice love? Seperti apa belajar tentang mengasihi? Love of the enemy on a collective level in our time and place. Mengasihi musuh kita. It may very well look like non-violent war resistance. Sorry. It may say. Seperti kita anti dengan kekerasan, cinta perdamaian. Maybe Mennonites could prepare for war resistance. Mungkin Mennonite bisa menyiapkan untuk anti kekerasan with an anti-military service. Dengan tanpa berperang, like a non-violent resistance boot camp. Seperti camp anti kekerasan. Nations prepare for war with military service. Bangsa mempersiapkan perang dengan militer. There is first aid training for emergency healthcare. Ada, um, pertolongan pertama uh, untuk perang, untuk uh, healthcare, seperti kayak perawat emergency di kala perang. It might be time for us to create a widespread training for regular church people. Mungkin saat ini kita bisa membuat training untuk seperti itu. To learn and practice the basics of civil resistance. Untuk belajar dan berlatih dasar dari anti kekerasan. Some people do, and will commit their whole life to non-violent peacemaking. Beberapa orang ada yang uh, berkomitmen di sepanjang hidupnya untuk perdamaian. And we desperately need people like that. Dan kita butuh benar-benar butuh orang seperti itu. But we also need a foundation of practice for the whole church. Tapi kita juga perlu dasar untuk latihan bagi seluruh gereja. In most of Europe, sebagian besar Eropa, we have more experience in discussion and debate. Kita punya banyak pengalaman dalam diskusi than we do in activism. Dan tidak dalam aktivitas war resistance, revolution, or social change. Melawan ke peperangan, revolusi, dan per perubahan sosial. We need the help of the global church. Kami butuh bantuan dari gereja global. 
if we want to find our footing in the field of practice. Jika kita mau belajar. We know that we have brothers and sisters who have experience in non-violent resistance. Kami tahu kami punya saudara-saudara yang punya pengalaman anti kekerasan. Please train us. Tolong ajari kami. Practice with us. Belajar dengan kami. So we can learn together. Sehingga kita bisa sama-sama belajar. That's how we'll hold fast when the storms come. Dengan itu kita bisa menghadapi badai yang datang. Amen. Amen. I'll ask you if we could stand up for a time for prayer, please. Let's pray now. Dear Lord, we want to thank you because you are God and that you can really take care of us even in situations that we cannot control, even in situations that we feel helpless, we feel tired, we don't know what to do. And I would like to lift to you in this moment Europe and all the situation that is going around the war in Ukraine, but that is also affecting the rest of the world. We are all asking for your intervention, and you know that you, you are going to, to do that in your own time. Meanwhile, we have to keep helping, praying, supporting each other, supporting the ones that are in this trouble situation. And I pray specifically for our global family, that we all can talk in one voice to end this conflict as soon as possible. We know that the situation looks dark. We know that it's probably not by humans that this situation might be solved. It's only with your miracle and with your intervention. So we pray that you can really uh, have the chance to reconcile the parts that are now in conflict. We also want to pray for the leaders, political leaders that are dealing with this. We pray that you give wisdom to them, give wisdom, give diplomacy to each of them to find out a way to finish this tragedy. We know that everything is possible to your eyes, and the only thing we ask and keep praying is that your will be done in the future. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Selamat malam semuanya. My name is Gail. Nama saya Gail. And I'm the delegate for friends. Saya utusan dari Prancis. Tonight, I will share with you a summary of the GYS written by the YAPS committee. Malam ini saya akan berbagi tentang hasil GYS, Global Youth Summit, uh, konferensi Pemuda Global. It is our joy to report on a successful Global Youth Summit. Dengan senang hati saya membagi uh, keberhasilan YGS ini. Successful not because of the program. Uh, bukan berhasil karena programnya. But simply because it was possible even within a short amount of time. Tapi karena bisa dilakukan walaupun dalam waktu yang sangat singkat. And successful because of the community and momentum for the work among young people that was built through it. Dan berhasil karena kerjasama dari seluruh pemuda di dalamnya. It was also successful because the Holy Spirit was present. Dan berhasil karena Roh Kudus ada. And working among us. Dan bekerja bersama-sama dengan kami. Bringing unity. 
Membawa kesatuan, joy, sukacita, encouragement, semangat, and empowerment, dan kekuatan. We had 120 participants. Kami punya 120 including, peserta, including 24 delegates, uh, termasuk 24 utusan, with four each from North America and Europe. Empat, sorry, empat from North America and Europe. Empat dari Amerika Utara dan Eropa. Eleven from Asia. Sebelas dari Asia. Six from Africa. Enam dari Afrika. And nine from Latin America. Sembilan dari Amerika Latin. Our theme was... Sorry. Our theme was... Tema kita adalah... Life in the Spirit, Learn, Serve, and Worship. Hidup dari Roh Kudus, Melayani, Serve, and Worship. Pujian. And our content was based on the book of Ephesians. Dan berdasar dari uh, Ephesus. In our delegate sessions, we looked at what are some of the common and distinct challenges for young people in their different contexts. Sorry. In our delegate session, uh, dalam sesi utusan kami, we looked at what some of the common and distinct challenges. Uh, kami melihat kesamaan dan perbedaan for young people in their different country contexts. Uh, pada pemuda dari berbagai macam konteks. Some common issues that surfaced were uh, uh, isu yang sama yang muncul loneliness and the need for belonging. Uh, adalah kesepian dan keinginan untuk memiliki the need for good leadership uh, keinginan untuk memiliki pemimpin yang bagus bridging the generation gap menjembatani perbedaan generasi and the need to redefine church uh, dan kebutuhan untuk me me mengartikan gereja in a way that the fiction of it uh, di mana pemuda dapat masuk di dalamnya can shift to the spaces can shift ya untuk pemuda bisa masuk di dalamnya where young people are present di mana uh, pemuda bagian dari gereja without the institutional structure tanpa dibagi secara institusional not only did the delegates look at challenges uh, tidak, de, utusan itu tidak hanya memberikan perubahan but they brainstorm some ideas and solution to them. Dan, tetapi mereka memberikan ide-ide untuk me, uh, solusi hal tersebut. And how they can be a part of bringing change. Dan bagaimana mereka bisa menjadi bagian untuk memberikan perubahan. By building relationships and sharing resources. Uh, membagi uh, persahabatan dan daya yang ada. More than just discussing. Lebih dari hanya berdiskusi. The delegates and participants enjoy their time. Uh, utusan dan para peserta menikmati mereka, menikmati waktu mereka. Learning from their different cultures. Belajar dari budaya yang berbeda-beda. Sharing snacks from their countries. Belajar tentang makanan dari berbagai macam negara. Sharing words of encouragement and strengthening. Uh, berbagi tentang motivasi dan saling menguatkan and praying for each other dan saling mendoakan satu sama lain one of the most impactful moments of GYS satu hal yang berimpact was after the delegates share with the participants satu hal yang saling sangat berimpact dalam GYS ini adalah ketika mereka saling mendoakan and we spend time praying for each other's country. Dan kita berdoa untuk negara masing-masing. And personal situations on a large map. Dan situasi personal masing-masing di seluruh dunia. The spirit was very present. Uh, Roh Kudus benar-benar hadir. As we united in prayer. Ketika kita sama-sama berdoa. And people authentically pray for the change. Dan orang-orang uh, itu berdoa untuk suatu perubahan. They wanted to see in the world and in yang, themselves. Yang mereka ingin lihat di dunia dan pada diri mereka sendiri. As such, we really felt that Jesus met with us during GYS. Da, dan Yesus benar-benar hadir di antara kami. And, and we are looking forward to seeing what continued fruit the Spirit bears in us. Dan kami menanti-nanti apa yang roh kudus buat pada kami. 
through relationship and collaboration melalui persahabatan dan kolaborasi in the work of building the global church di dalam dunia dalam membangun gereja global for me personally untuk saya GYS was a time of encounter GYS adalah uh, saat untuk bertemu encounters with brothers and sisters from all around the world bertemu dengan saudara-saudara dalam Kristus di seluruh dunia creating friendship with them membangun persahabatan dengan mereka and discovering new cultures dan uh, tahu budaya-budaya baru and encounters with God dan bertemu dengan dan bertemu dengan Tuhan through the teaching melalui ajaran the worship penyembahan the discussions diskusi and the prayers dan berdoa he reaffirm my identity and my calling dan meyakinkan identitas saya dan panggilan saya this joyous was also an eye opening moment JS ini merupakan uh, bisa mencelikkan mata saya. I became aware of how big and rich saya jadi tahu betapa besar dan kaya the Mennonite family is. Keluarga Mennonite. And I'm grateful to be a part of this worldwide community. Dan saya, saya sangat bersyukur menjadi bagian dari komunitas dunia ini. The churches in our global Anabaptist family face wide and diverse challenges. While the Faith and Life Commission has few resources, it is rich in gifted representatives of our global community. Our task is to assist our global family in strengthening biblical and theological capacity to faithfully witness to the God of peace and salvation in a world facing unbelief, violence, and the growing climate crisis. For example, the commission is helping Anabaptist churches engage the recent conversations between Catholics, Lutherans, and Mennonites on baptism. As we learn from other communions, we also offer communions our Anabaptist convictions. Please do to stand up. Kami naikkan syukur kepadamu ya Tuhan. Karena berkatmu kami boleh melaksanakan acara malam ini dengan baik, bahkan kami boleh mengakhirinya. Kami akan pulang ke rumah kami masing-masing dan melanjutkan aktivitas kami di malam ini sampai kami tidur malam nanti. Berkati kami semua Tuhan, kasih karunia Tuhan Yesus Kristus, kasih Allah Bapa dan persekutuan Roh Kudus menyertai saudara-saudara semua. Amin. Songs, verse number 29. Number 29. Uh, both are final songs, actually written by Mennonites. This first one from France, uh, from a, a community of folks who created resources specifically for French-speaking uh, Anabaptists, a collection called Chance Anabaptiste. So this is number 29. We'll first sing it in English to learn the tune, and then we will sing in French as well. mercy, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. 
song number 19 a song number 19 we your people sing your praises we will sing in uh, three languages first we will sing in french and then we will sing in bahasa ya uh, bagi bapak ibu nanti bernyanyi bersama kami ya ketika bernyanyi dalam bahasa and then the last one is in english okay let's sing three languages first is french bahasa then english <laughs> 